But first, more and more Canadians are putting themselves at serious financial risk thanks to their mortgages, and that could lead to big trouble in the long run. A new report from the C.D. Howe Institute warns the number of Canadians carrying mortgage debt that's at least 500% of their disposable income is rising. It's gone from just over 3% of mortgages in 1999 to nearly 11% in 2012. A growing part of that increase is made up of younger people, people in lower income households, and those in the country's most expensive markets like Ontario and B.C. And one in 10 of those high-risk households have less than a $1,500 financial cushion to draw on if there's an emergency. They're vulnerable to any increase in mortgage rates or some other financial shock. Craig Alexander is the Vice President of Economic Analysis at the C.D. Howe Institute and one of the authors of the report. You are worried about young people in particular. How come? Well, what we're looking at is how the shift in mortgage debt distribution has changed. And what we can see is that that more Canadians are carrying more mortgage debt across all age groups, across all income groups, um, and across across virtually all regions. But when you look at how the, the shifts have taken place, you can see that there is pockets of vulnerability in the Canadian marketplace. So I actually think the majority of Canadians have behaved very responsibly with their finances. It's not a surprise they've taken on more debt when we've made interest rates so low for so long. There's a very strong incentive to borrow. But there is a significant minority of Canadians at risk. And when we look at where the shifts have, have taken place, people wouldn't be surprised that, 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 that younger people are at more risk because mm. you're, you know, when you're getting into the market today, man, you're taking a lot more mortgage debt than younger people before did because of how prices have risen. So why would lenders allow that? I mean, there's a huge process to getting a mortgage. There's lots of things that they check to make sure that you're going to be a good, a good borrower. Is it a worry for the lenders? So I think if we look at the, the characteristics and the distribution of risk, uh, I think it actually shows the strength of our, of our financial system. I think it shows that the Canadian banks are very well regulated um, and that it, they, there's very good oversight of the financial system because, as I said, in, in today's world with very low rates, the vast majority of Canadians are in actually okay shape. But when you look at the, the tail end of the distribution, you look at where there's there's pockets of risk, what you can see is, is 1 in 10 Canadians, uh, roughly 11%, have mortgage debt on their primary residence. So we're not counting any, anything else, any other debt besides this, just the debt on their primary mortgage mortgage is more than five times their income. And this 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 is a group that you would think is at risk. Now, 10% is not the bulk of the population. You know, it says that you're talking about a minority. But but the number of households we're talking about yeah. is about half a million households. It's a lot of households. Now, uh, any experienced renter, winter driver would say, don't slam the brakes on in an icy road. What are some of the regulatory things that you say could make a difference? So I think that what we've seen in the data is that the the regulatory tightening that's been happening over time incrementally, we've had four rounds of tightening, has had a positive impact in tempering debt growth. However, I think that you could make a case to further gradually lean against the impossible imbalances out there. And in particular, I think you want to keep the distribution of debt in mind when you're designing those policies. So for example, uh, if the government was to raise the minimum down payment across the entire country, I think that would be a very heavy-handed approach. It would impact all of the markets and all and, and, and all, all mortgage insurance borrowers equally. I think right. that that would be a blunt tool. I think a, a more effective approach might be to say uh, income test mortgage qualifi qualifi qualifications at a higher interest rate or limit the total debt service ratios that you're, allow, you're going to allow people to borrow at. That way you would target people at the top end of the, the, of the market. You'd also encourage them maybe to take on a smaller mortgage. Another way of dealing with the fact that a lot of the strength is in certain urban centers like Toronto and Vancouver would be to say change the minimum down payment rules, but vary it based on the size of the mortgage you were taking out or the price of the property. That's a controversial suggestion, don't you think? Well, I think that ultimately what it does is it leans against the markets where you're going to see the, the highest ratios. And and this is, you know, we've seen some international examples of this. So, for example, in, in the UK, uh, the Bank of England has introduced a rule limiting how much mortgage lending banks can do to individuals with an income with a, a mortgage to income ratio of above 450 percent. And the reason they're doing that is that they know that the, the percentage of people above that ratio outside of the city of London is actually quite low. The ratio in 
inside the city of London is about 19% of all the mortgages. So therefore, they're trying to lean against you know that market. And I think that you could make a case in Canada that if we're going to do something further on 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 leaning against uh, household leverage, it would be to to try and differentiate across markets or across the type of borrower. Right. Not the same from east to west. Thank you very much, Craig Alexander. We appreciate it.